Hi there and welcome aboard the R100. Today we'd like you to step aboard an airship which is something we could do in the past but we can't do today. Before we begin this onboard tour of the R100 I'd like to take you back to a little bit of history behind the ship. The R100 itself was designed in 1926 by Barnes Wallace and it was constructed by a subsidiary of Vickers called the Airship Guarantee Company. Work started in 1926 in the giant double airship shed in Howden in Yorkshire and over the next three years the 700 foot framework of the ship grew and filled one of the two gigantic shed bays. The R100 itself was of a very new aerodynamic design and it was looking to carry up to 100 passengers across the oceans in comfort not seen before. The ship made her first flight on December the 16th 1929 and then the following summer made a voyage to Montreal in Canada and back and a journey of some 6,000 miles. In the past we've only been able to guess what it was like on board by studying the plans and imagining from very grainy photographs what it would be like to travel across the ocean but now thanks to the artistic talent of Marshall Young we can actually take a tour of inside the R100. The passenger accommodation was situated in the main hull which consisted of three decks sitting below the giant gas bags. These were to give the ship her lift. Now let's start the tour and begin with the upper deck. There were cabins arranged around the top with a small lounge gallery large enough for passengers to sit and relax. There was a main staircase and this was designed to connect all of the decks and it followed on the form of like the grand staircases on ocean liners. In between the cabins was a small corridor which gave access to an upper promenade deck on each side of the ship. Now let's take a closer look at the inside and we'll start with the staircase itself. The columns were clad with a thin veneer of dark wood and the stairs were partially covered in a dark carpet and these were held in place with stair rods which was very much the style of that period. There was enough space for the passengers to walk around in the upper lounge and then look down on the lower decks. There were electric lamps which provided additional lights. Some of the chairs were made of wicker cane. These were for comfort but also for lightness. Now let's go downstairs to the main deck. The main deck itself was the heart of the ship for the passengers. There were some additional sleeping cabins down here for 36 more passengers. The toilets and washrooms were situated behind the main staircase along with discreet dressing rooms for the ladies. There was also access to the lower promenade deck next to the giant picture windows. In the centre of the main deck was the dining room and the all electric kitchen. The double height of the dining room would have given a feeling of space. While we're on the main deck let's have a quick closer look into one of the cabins. Now they may seem sparse by today's standards but each cabin had a large porthole light. The cabins were either configured as a two or four berth configuration. It was expected that the passengers would store their clothes in a small suitcase which would be stored under the bottom bunk. As the ship was lighter than air it was essential that weight be saved where it could so there were no doors but a heavy curtain would be used for privacy. The cabins were small but comfortable and it was expected that the passengers would spend most of the day outside of the cabins and in the lounge areas. Let's move on to one of the features that would have drawn most of the passengers and it's the giant picture windows and the promenade decks. When looking at the ship from the outside the promenade deck windows were actually the main set of windows to provide light to the passenger accommodation but if you look closely there was also a lower deck set of windows for the crew deck. The promenade would have been like the decks of a ship and it would have afforded some amazing views at about a thousand feet. During the day this is where the passengers would have found their favourite spot to while away the time watching the world go by. Now let's go downstairs even further into the crew space on the crew deck. There were the main stairs and the link to the main corridor to the nose of the ship. There was the captain's cabin, a navigational and meteorological room 
and this was close to the ladder which connects down to the control car. There'd also be a space for a food locker or cooler and a connecting ladder back up to the kitchen above. Access to the back of the interior of the ship for the crew would have been via the aft corridor. There was a provision store and alongside the crew bunks there was a set of toilets and wash basins. The crew would spend their off-duty time in the crew space and they'd also eat their meals from the central table. The last area of the ship which we haven't covered is the control car. This is placed at the bottom of the ship and it was connected by a ladder to the crew deck above. You'll see here that the front of the control car had large floor to ceiling windows that afforded the steering coxswain a really clear view in front of him. And finally, here's a picture of the crew and the officers looking very smart in their official uniforms sitting in front of the control car. I hope you enjoyed this tour of the R100 and thanks for watching.